Ms. Aurora is back, Secured Entrepreneurs. You all know Ms. Aurora tries to make these videos in between helping all of you. I want to thank all of you who email. Please continue to do so at info at auroradayconsulting.com. I want to thank everyone who's already on the calendar for July. I, 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 I don't know what all of you want. This, this is insane. There must be something going on. I really believe that because of what we're going to talk about in today's video. All right. For those of you who enjoy our early morning spiritual talks, find us over at the 3 a.m. shenanigans channel for the ladies 50 and up secured entrepreneur at women 50 plus find us over there on that channel. And yes, the men who support us can come on over. Okay. In this video, Mr. Roar is going to get into this entire thing with this phony bill of exchange, the phony bonds. Mr. Roar made a video three years ago. Mr. Roar talked about a client who was trying to do what he thought was going to be a sale for, for a property. This was an international situation. He had an individual who sent him an international bill of exchange. Okay. That's how this whole thing got started. So Mr. Aurora went on to explain what this, what the bill of exchange was, why, how we found out that it was not legitimate and things of this nature. What ensued after that? A bunch of individuals who wanted to, uh, share all of the knowledge that they've gained through their studies, but, but it was clear that they had no practical knowledge, no practical use and no money because there's no way you're going to have a transaction with a bank without money. And then they were like, well, you don't need a bank. Okay. I, so I didn't know if these people were, uh, uh, trolls or if this thing was, was for real, like this was crazy. Right. Okay. So this, this past week, some of the comments that came in on that video, I told an individual that, you know what, I'm going to do another video and I'm going to break it down so that we don't go through this anymore. Because here, uh, we, we build six and seven figure businesses that are tax free. We take you from sole proprietor to CEO. That's what we do here in the secure entrepreneur movement. So let's get into this. All right. Can we do it? So for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Miss Aurora Day, and I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you build six and seven figure tax-free businesses. And we all know that this is the Secured Entrepreneur Movement. All right now, Secured Entrepreneurs. Here's Miss Aurora three years ago in this video. I'm explaining to the secured entrepreneurs that our client Ryan likes to come out here and do all these real estate transactions. He found a property in London. He called about the property and found that it was not an agent or an agency. It was a person who stated that the property was for sale by owner. So his way of going about verifying that number one, that the property actually really existed because we know that those scams are out here too. And he wasn't there to say whether it existed or not. Okay. Uh, he's going through the motions with this man somehow, somehow or another. And I could not figure this out. He's asking the man to do something for him at his bank so that his bank would know that this transaction was going to happen. He's go they're going to do this closing. He was asking for some type of financial proof. I, I could not get that straight. What the man came back to him with was a bogus international bill of exchange. So when he receives this bill of exchange, he's, he immediately emails us. Okay, Miss Aurora, what is this? Because I'm trying to verify that this man is a true bona fide owner of a property that actually exists. I asked him for some evidence from his bank, you know, uh, about the property, things like that. And this is what this man sends me. So now of course I'm baffled because I'm like, why would, if he's the seller, why would he be sending you a bill of exchange? Okay. I'm explaining to the secured entrepreneurs that this man who's selling a property gave my client an exchange, a bill of exchange where he's supposed to be selling property. Like the whole thing was insane. So now I have to look at this instrument because I'm like, this is, this is bonkers, right? So when I see the, the, the instrument, true indeed, it is, it is a bogus international bill of exchange. Now, let me explain to the secure entrepreneurs who have no idea what the heaven I'm talking about. The bill of exchange, it is a negotiable instrument. And you can, as a matter of fact, 
A check is a bill of exchange. A check is a form of a bill of exchange. A check is a draft, right? Okay, so check it out. There are three parties to this bill of exchange. The first party, let's say it's me. Because I want to give the third party some monies, right? The second party is the financial institution to which I'm drawing on this negotiable instrument, okay? So this negotiable instrument is drawn off of uh, Bank of New York Mellon, okay? So I am writing on this instrument an amount of money to be paid to the third party, either today's date or predetermined date. That is the bill of exchange because we're about to have an exchange. I want to buy your property. All right. Now this was international because this instrument that the person sent to Ryan is drawn on a bank that is not in the United States. So it's drawn on a bank that's not in the United States to be, to be cashed at a financial institution in the United States that, that constitutes as an international bill of exchange. Okay. Now, what Ryan was trying to do was get his bank involved or get the seller's bank involved. Okay. Because he needed to know whether this person owned the property was the property legit it, it, it was it was a mess what they were trying to uh, accomplish together it was crazy okay so i explained to the secured entrepreneurs that ryan has just received a bogus international bill of exchange and if you were to get an instrument like this for any transaction this is what you need to be looking for because this is what we don't see on this bill of exchange. Okay. Now let Miss Aurora pause this because I want to read to you some of the comments because that's why we're here today and for, and excuse the sun because the sun, you know, I'm in the middle of the day now and, uh, we're sitting in the sun. I like that. Okay. Here we go. First comment bills of exchange. Oh, look at this. Bills of exchange are drawn by a buyer, not the bank. All right. So part of that is false. I can go to the bank and get a cashier's check. I can go to the bank and get a negotiable instrument uh, uh, drawn from my account. I can get traveler's checks. Okay. Remember, all we're talking about is a draft, a negotiable instrument that that's the three parties here. So if I decided that I wanted to go to the bank instead of writing a check and giving it to somebody, if they say, I, I want a bank check, I want that check to come directly out of your account. This way I know that I'm going to get the money because it's, draw, it's, it's a bank check. It's coming directly from the bank. How many of you have had to do that? You've done that. Okay. The same way people say they want a money order. <laughs> They want a money order. Why? Because you had to go and give the money to have that money order printed. So when they get that money order, they know, oh no, this is good. This, this is right as rain. This is just like receiving cash because you gave cash for me to get this. Okay. That's a negotiable instrument, right? So part of that is wrong. Bill of exchange can have no bank. Well, we know that's wrong because I can't just hand you a blank piece of paper. We all know that People write bad checks, meaning I can write on this negotiable instrument. I could demand a certain amount of money on a certain date and give it to the third party, right? The third party, if the third party doesn't go directly to this financial institution to find out ain't no money in this account, then they're going to wait a day or two to find out it bounced. Okay. I can't make good on this piece of paper. Can't do it. Right? So we know that's false. Bill of exchange must be presented to the bank of the seller for presentment, for acceptance or payment. Now he had that right. That is correct. It would have been Ryan who would have had to, uh, who would have had to give the seller the negotiable instrument. If, he, if that's the way they were going to do it, 
for the seller to take to his financial institution to uh to cash okay so that 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 would have had to happen all right next per the uniform commercial code ucc article 3 negotiable instruments if you are a holder in due course have filed a ucc1 financing statement with the state you can create your own bill of exchange when the treasury is involved holder in due course doesn't have to involve a bank check out article 4 bank deposits and article 9 secured transactions so of course when i read that i was like okay this is a very misinformed individual and it's clear that they don't have any money because once again I can't sit up here and hand somebody an instrument that I done did a once a UCC one on and it, it, I'm about to sh I'm about to uh I'm about to break it down. Hold up now. This was my favorite. This was my favorite. How are bill of exchanges fake though? You clearly don't need you clearly don't read contract law. It says public law 7310 by an HSR 192. The bank uses them every day in promissory notes. So if the bank is using them every day, what you're saying makes no sense. So I said, okay, this is insane. Clearly nobody heard what I said in the video. This man received a bogus international bill of exchange. I, they, they, I mean, that's the reality of it. If, if there's no money back in it, what, what are you going to do with it? What? Okay. So I replied to somebody. Oh yeah. Okay. So this person says you got to do more research because everyone is a bank. What does that have to do with this man receiving a bogus bill of exchange? So I said, this was concerning a transaction with a financial institution. So it is accurate information coming from practical experience. Anything else? would be fraud and false. And then he says 12 USC 412 bill drafts, bankers acceptance or legal tender, LOL. I think you need to learn the law. So this one, I bust up laughing. Okay. So I told one of these people that I was going to make this video because again, we don't, we don't, we don't advocate any of these things here in the secure entrepreneur movement. So I'm going to take you to the Treasury Direct because, see, everything that they're telling you about this scheme, these people are saying it in the comments. So here we go. Bogus site drafts, bills of exchange drawn on the Treasury. There has been a proliferation of bogus site drafts and bills of exchange drawn on the U.S. Treasury Department. These documents have appeared in a majority of states and have been used in an attempt to pay for everything from cars to child support. This is on the treasurydirect.gov website. The story. A stripped down version of this scheme is as follows. When the United States went off the gold standard in 1933, the federal government somehow went bankrupt. With the help of the Federal Reserve Bank, the government converted the bodies of its citizens into capital value, supposedly by trading the birth certificates of U.S. citizens on the open market. After following a complicated process of filing UCC documents with either the Secretary of State of the person's residence or another state that will accept the filings, each citizen is entitled to redeem his or her value by filling out a site draft drawn on their non-existent Treasury Direct account. The scheme asserts that each citizen's social security number is also his or her account number. As, part, as a part of the scheme, participants also file false IRS forms, 8300, and currency transaction reports in the name of law enforcement officials and other individuals they seek to harass. Hmm. Hmm. So now we, we all know, because I know what the next comments are going to be in emails and everything. We all know that there's some truth sprinkled in the scheme. 
You'll have to come to a VIP to really get the rest of that because I'm not going there on YouTube. I'm not going to, I'm not doing any of that, but this is, this is the, this is the fraud. Okay. So the reality drawing such drafts on the U S treasury is fraudulent and a violation of federal law. The theory behind their use is bogus and incomprehensible. The justice department is vigorously prosecuting these crimes. Federal criminal convictions have occurred in several cases. The Office of the Comptroller of the Currency has tried to alert the banking community to this fraud. Okay, there's two things I want to say here. Number one, I actually know about four people who have uh, gone to prison for things like this. I know four people. And they only went to prison simply because they were trying to give these bogus uh, instruments to financial institutions. And I think that in those cases, they must have went too far because there's a lot of people who have tried to exchange these things with, with entities and all of that. And they never bothered them. They just told them that we can't accept it. Uh, some, some people, yes, the police were called on them. And then some people did have uh, charges filed against them and they were prosecuted. I know four people who this has happened to, uh, but they were playing a very dangerous game. They were playing a very dangerous game, pushing the envelope point blank. Okay. Uh, the second thing about that, uh, that I wanted to say here is that many of you has uh, sent in things to Miss Aurora that you try to do and, and you try to open up accounts and places and they immediately told you no because they have alerted the financial community so they are on a lookout as to how you write your name Thing, things that you're writing on instruments you know i mean some of the stuff has is so elaborate that even i have to laugh uh when you send it to me because i'm like oh this is a clear sign okay Go ahead and send that to the financial institution and see how fast they they boot you out. And it does happen. They don't like it because they know that you you desire to commit fraud, whether you are aware of it or not. It is fraudulent as far as they're concerned, whether you are aware of it or not. OK, with early and vigorous prosecution by the Justice Department on bogus site draft cases, we have begun to see bills of exchange taking their place. This change occurred on or around January 2001. All these bills of exchange drawn on the U.S. Treasury are worthless. All the same issues and background materials applicable to site drafts also apply to bills of exchange. This is the same fraud under another name. Okay, so what are we talking about here, right? Let's let's go on to the to the the birth certificate bond. Several internet blogs and videos make false claims that a United States birth certificate is a negotiable instrument, a document that promises payment that can be used to. Okay, let me back this up. I just told you all what a negotiable instrument is, right? Why would you make the claim that the birth certificate is a negotiable instrument? You cannot write on it a specific amount of money paid to a specific person or entity on a specific date. You cannot do that. So, all right. Used to make purchases that will be charged to a exemption account, perhaps identified by your social security number or EIN or request savings bonds held by the government in your name and owed to you. The truth is, birth certificates cannot be used for purchases, nor can they be used to request savings bonds purportedly held by the government. Also, the exemption account is a false term. These accounts are fictitious and do not exist in the treasury system. This is what they're saying. The story. This story is a variation of the older bogus site drafts bills of exchange drawn on the treasury scam. The common tale offered in this scam states, when the United States went off the gold standard in 1933, 
the federal government somehow went bankrupt. With the help of the Federal Reserve Bank, the government became a corporation sometimes called government franchise and converted the bodies of its citizens into capital value, supposedly by trading the birth certificates of U.S. citizens on the open market and making each citizen a corporate asset, sometimes referred to as a straw man, whose value is con controlled by the government. Uh, once again, as Ms. Roy just stated, we all know there's always going to be some truth sprinkled in some of the scheme. Okay, so I'm never going to sit here and tell you that some of it is not is not factual. You know, there, 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 there could be some pieces that are actually true. But it doesn't take away from the fact that there's a huge scam going on because we know that it only takes one piece of the truth to add to the lie to make people believe it. Hello. Scams vary in methods for citizens to gain control of their alleged assets, such as filing a UCC-1 financial statement. What did that person write on the video? Activating a treasury direct account. What did that person write on the video? Creating bonds by using the savings bond calculator. These blogs and videos promise that your birth certificate bond will be able to wipe out all of your debt and help you collect monies or securities. Some internet sites even offer to sell videos, webinars, and coaching on how to do this. No one has profited from the Treasury Department by using these tactics. Now, I was very happy to read that they're saying nobody's getting any money from us to, 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 to uh, mislead you to give you misinformation. That's not us. Okay. But the scammers intend to profit from this story by selling their bogus wares. So here's the reality. There is no monetary value to a birth certificate or a social security number slash EIN and treasury direct accounts must be funded. Hello, funded. What did I say? You can't just give me a piece of paper. Can't just write me a negotiable in instrument. How is it being funded, people? Hello? All right. Funded by the owner through payroll deductions or from purchasing directly from the owner's personal bank account to have any value. The savings bond calculator is merely a tool to calculate the value of a bond based on an issue date and denomination entered. This information could be the issue date and denomination from a real bond or it could just be a random choice of a date and denomination the calculator only checks that the issue date and denomination entered are a valid combination it will not verify whether a bond exists the calculator will not verify the validity of a serial number or confirm bond ownership Please be advised that trying to defraud the government by claiming rights to bogus securities is a violation of federal law. And the Justice Department can and has prosecuted these crimes. Federal criminal convictions have occurred in several cases. The scam artists who post blogs and videos are trying to defraud you into buying their fake product. Do not fall victim to their schemes. Once again, secured entrepreneurs, Ms. Aurora does not make these videos to cater towards any of these things because it is harmful. It is harmful to people. And, and once again, as I stated, I know personally several people who have spent their last dime trying to get a remedy because they don't have enough money to care for what is ailing them financially. So they get talked into doing all of this studying. Look at this coat. Look at this coat. Look at this coat. Put that together. Put this together. Do this. Do that. And and in all of it, don't you notice that all it's doing is costing you more money to file this, file that, mail this, mail that. Okay. What have you gotten in return? No thing. All right. So there you have it. There, there's your answer for everybody who commented and who continues to comment on that video. Okay. The reality is the client received a bogus international bill of exchange, no matter 
how he came about getting it or why the man sent it to him. The bottom line was the man was trying to scam, sell, uh, sell a home that didn't even belong to him. <laughs> okay. And then he brings in this phony negotiable instrument. It was insane. So that's why I told the secured entrepreneurs to beware of it. That's what that was about. There you have it, secured entrepreneurs. Look, the sun is really in here today. I might get a suntan for the first time in my life today. <laughs> okay. But anyway, you heard it. Okay. That is, that is the whole thing behind this phony bond and phony bill of exchange situation from the treasury direct that gov website. And I felt it necessary to share all of that because again, as I stated, many of you are emailing and sending via email phony documents. And you're saying, Miss Aurora, is this real? What can I do with it? And then I have to tell you, oh no, this is, this is definitely not legitimate. You cannot take this to a bank and do anything with it. It's just, and then some of you are saying, okay, I want to make these bonds for my trust and everything. Okay. Well, what are you backing it by? Let me see the banking information, you know, and we'll do, you know, X, Y, and Z. Oh, well no, well, no, I can do that myself because it says, you know, and you start giving me all these codes and all that stuff. Okay. Okay. If, if these instruments are not backed by currency, some form of currency, okay, they, they, they would be deemed as bogus. And this is coming from treasurydirect.gov. And so... They don't care how many codes, you know, they could care less what you're presenting. If there's no currency backing it, they are not paying you any attention. So you're going to have to find your way to putting currency behind these instruments that you are trying to utilize. Okay. Because they're telling you clearly on their website that it will not come from that birth certificate, nor will it come from that bogus bill of exchange. Okay. And so all of you know, if you need to get on Mr. Rory's calendar or you want to come into the sole proprietor to CEO program, the links are going to be down below in the description box. And you all know you can find me, Mr. Aurora Day at AuroraDayConsulting.com. And until next time, ta-ta.